Welcome to part one of two for my uh, Super Smash Flash modding series of videos. The first thing you want to do is join the uh, the Color Vault server. I will put that link in the description. This is where all the uh, the costumes are made. Um, you can make any uh, costume you want, pretty much, within the restrictions of the uh, the coloring sheet. So you can get pretty crazy with it. Like, I've seen some really, really good costumes in this server. If you can think it, you could probably do it without having to change the sprite, obviously. So once you're in this server, the first thing you want to do is download Presser. What this will do is this will decompress all of your um, files for the game so that they can be used and opened in a different program, which we will get to later. I use Presser 2, personally. It's older, and it's not as fancy, but that's what I started using whenever I first did it, and it still works. I use this version here. I don't like the format of the new one, so the old one, Every single DAT file is, it, it doesn't change your DAT files. And what DAT files are, are the files that you see in your folder here. Here's all the files for the game. Each number means a specific thing related to how the game reads its code. What the newer version of Presser does is it separates it like this with a text document for each one, which just seems to me a bit more confusing. So I, I, I use Presser 2. You don't have to, but for this tutorial I will be using Presser 2. If you guys want a different version, I can explain Presser 3. It will just be this video again, but I'll add in a snippet of Presser 3. Now, you'd want to go to the first message here, and you'd want to get Presser 2. So once you extract it, you will click extract and you can extract it wherever you want but once it's extracted you will see this folder you click on it and then you open the application right here now once that is open i use uncompress the entire folder just because if i want to do multiple things at once you don't have to personally it's a preference thing for me again you want to go to whatever your copy is of Smash Flash. Obviously I renamed these folders for the sake of the video. And so once once you open your copy, you will find this data folder. All of these are .ssf files and we are turning them into .swf files. That way we can open them in a different program called JPEX, which we will get to after this is done. So you want to decompress this, wait for this to respond, Once this is done uncompressing either your files or your folder, you will want to download JPEX Free Flash Decompiler. I will put a link to that in the description. You don't have to be on this website necessarily, so go download that. The next thing you'll need to download is paint.net. I will provide a link to that in the description, but the uh, download link is right here. You will also need to download image to RGB. That's two as in with the number two. The latest version will be well, the newest sent message. Once you have all of these downloaded, we can actually get started with the uh, the costume making process. So in the Color Vault Discord server, you will want to go down to the characters list. Now pick whatever character that you want to do. Let's say, for instance, I want to mod Sonic. You want to go to the pinned message. You will see two different Sonics. You will see the original one that's used in-game for referencing if you want to only recolor one certain part of the character, or you want to make a different type of version of the main costume, or you could use the separation one, which separates different various parts of the character. Right-click it, save the image, and then save it to wherever you want to keep it. Once that is downloaded, you'll want to go to Piscale. Also put this link in the description. There's gonna be a lot of links, so it might get confusing, but you'll want to go down to this icon here, go to Import, 
import from picture and then browse images. This will pull up your computer's files and this is where you will click this sheet import. Okay, you might be asking, well, let's say I want to recolor it, right? This would take forever if you're just doing a normal bucket tool. Luckily for you, there is this bucket tool right here. Now what this does is this allows you to select all the colors throughout the entire sheet. Now what this will do is change the colors up here. As you can see, these colors are used for the game, so to speak, the code, to read what colors you want changed. Basically, you want to select this bucket tool. Let's say I want him red with a lime green outline, okay? You'd want to figure out what color that you'd want for each different type of shading. Let's say I want him to be red. I would make him whatever different hues or shades you'd want. I would give him a green outline. There's also some pixels in here, like some colors that a lot of people miss. For example, in this Sonic, you could color almost anything and still miss this little bit of blue. Or for example, um, Lloyd's recolor sheet. There's one light pink slash purple pixel on a sprite that is easily missed on a color sheet and so it allows a lot of costumes to have a pink or purple pixel just on the outfit of the character which once you look at it you can't not look at it so here we have my recolored sonic obviously you can recolor more parts like the gloves or the skin or the eyes or anything any color on here you can recolor don't try to add things like if I wanted to give Sonic like a, a hat or something, right? That's not how this works. I can't just can't just draw a hat on it and expect it to be in the game. These these colors are specifically for your viewing to see how it'd look in game. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a proper Sonic alt and I'm going to put it in the game's code. So once you're done making your costume, here's mine for example, I made just a mint colored Sonic, you want to export, select the PNG option, select the first download option, you will see it in your folder here for your downloads, along with any other costume you decide to make. Now you can close out of Pixel once you are certain that you have your image saved. And now open paint.net and then select the image that you have here. Once you have imported your image here, you want to go to this section here. You're going to see a big square section and then you're going to see a smaller one pixel square section. You'll want to use the rectangle select tool and from the very beginning of this, the very first pixel, select it, highlight all of these here. Till you get to the very last one. Now hit Control C to copy it to your clipboard on your computer. Open image to RGB again. Hit paste in the required PA palette. That's what these are labeled as. That is PA pal, that is this one. And then for sprites, this is obviously the in-game sprites. These colors are what you see on the character select screen. These colors are what you see on the actual in-game sprite. You want to do the same thing that you did for the last one. Select this top row, control C, and then you want to paste it in the fighter palette. It says optional, but some characters have different colors on their portraits than they do on their fighter. Next, you're gonna see the fighter template section, the drop down of all of the characters that you can recolor as of this current patch. Select whatever character that you picked. You want to turn on the legacy AS3 syntax for this example because what we are doing is putting it directly into the dat file like such without using presser 3. 
Now there is an alternate way to do this by adding it to the game using the JSON syntax, but for this specific tutorial you'll want to have that on. Like I said before, I will make an alternate version with the other format and way of making costumes if people would like that as well. So that would be Tankly 8 Part 3 after I'm done with the stage one. So once you see all of this code here after hitting convert, you will see something by unknown. You can put a name here, you can put the costume and whatever. I didn't for the sake of the tutorial. Now you'll want to highlight from this point the underscore right here, all the way down to the very bottom of the code. Make sure everything is selected. Hit Control C to copy it into your clipboard. And you can also open up Notepad and save this as whatever you want. I'm going to save it as Mint Sonic because that's what I called it. And now find the dat list for the current patch. What I use is the wiki for the dat list. And since I'm modding 1.3.1.1, this video may be outdated for the current version that you're using. And so these dats will not be the same. But what you want to do is you want to go down to the miscellaneous section, find out where the costumes are right here. For this version of the game, it is dat 135. Open up JPEX, wherever you put your folder copy that you uncompressed, open that up open up the data section, and now we want to open 135. Once this is open, we want to go down here at the bottom of this, select scripts, you'll see a bunch of stuff here. We want to go to this one that says miscellaneous. And then you want to edit the action script. Find the character that you have edited. For me, I put Sonic, so I'm going to do Control F to open up this quick find. Type in Sonic. And now here is the list of all of the default costumes in the game. You can remove these if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. I just add on to the costumes. You want to go down until you find this part here at the end that has all of the characters' names. So as you can see, this is just Sonic, 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 all the way down. But here at the very bottom of the list, Sonic, Isaac, Chibi Robo, Ness, and all the surrounding characters, you want to hit up once and it will take you back to Sonic's list. And now you'll see, oh, it says Samus, because that's the next in line for the code. So to add the costume that you want, Click right here next to the semicolon and under this bracket, select enter, paste in the costume that you want. Now you want to hit save at the bottom, right here next to the cancel button, and then you want to hit save in the top left corner. Once that is saved, you can close out of JPEX. Once JPEX is closed, you want to open presser and then recompress the folder so that this runs in the game. This may take a while to recompress depending on how many costumes that you changed, but once it is done, you can open your copy of Super Smash Flash 2 and your costume should be in the game. Now that it is done recompressing, you want to open the copy of Super Smash Flash 2 that you have modded. For me, this is my personal copy of the game that I have modded. So there is a couple of things different, such as the background or other costumes that I've added. But as you can see, there he is. He is in the game. And now we are going to fight and see how it looks. If you have any questions on this tutorial. Leave them in the comments and I will try to respond to them as quick as I can. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, Smash Flash 2 costume modding tutorial and uh, I will see you in part 2 for modding stages.